Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric Dill Jarhead here. Today, I wanna to talk about my first install of my solar power at the cabin. Now, first, what I'm gonna tell you is that while I'd never done solar before, I had, however, worked in telecom a long time and worked with lots of DC power plants. So I wasn't too worried about doing DC power because I've done lots of it. And I had enough experience doing it that I was confident that I would have no problem with it. I will say this though, I was always kind of an R&D guy in telecom. I was never an installer and I am not the best installer. My wiring isn't great. In fact, I have a friend that's gonna come out and help me redo my wiring and get it all nice and done the way it should be because I tend to be a bit of an impatient person and rush things a little too much. So Robert's gonna come out and help me fix that up a little bit and make me slow down and do a much nicer job. And that's great because having somebody with a strong electrical background would be kind of nice because he could teach me things that I don't know. But let's talk about my install. So first of all, I planned my cabin solar power for a weekend type, holiday type cabin. It wasn't intended to be one that I would live in and I knew I was underpowering the solar power for my cabin because I figured, you know what, I have a generator, I can keep my batteries topped up with that if my solar power is not enough and frankly, I couldn't afford more solar. At that time, solar panels were a buck a watt. So I sourced some 205 watt panels and I bought three of those. And I knew at the time that I really needed a little bit more, but that's all I could afford. So I got those three panels. I bought a charge controller, which was not an MPPT charge controller. And at the time, I really didn't know that that mattered. I bought a 2500 watt modified sine wave inverter. Now I knew about pure sine, but I thought I could get away with modified and I did for a little while. And I bought DC breaker boxes and combiner boxes and all that stuff, everything that I needed, MC4 cables, the whole nine yards. And then I designed with a neighbor of mine, a ground mount rack system that I wanted to be able to move, tilt, all that kind of stuff and thought maybe someday I might put in some kind of tracker. Now, I'll be honest, it's a bit heavy for a tracker, I think, and it's not balanced as well as it should be for a tracker, but that's a whole nother story. Truth is, I won't put a tracker on it today. The most I might do is change those solar panels out for you know, some bifacials or something maybe, but I don't know that I'll ever change them because they work. I get more than 615 watts out of them at peak power on a perfect day, so they're still working really well. I'm not likely to change them. But anyway, we built the rack system got everything out to the cabin. And the first thing that we had to do was actually build a porch on the cabin to store everything, because I didn't even have a porch. No deck, no porch, nothing. So we framed up a new porch that was, I think, eight feet by six feet, so that we could put the batteries and all the solar power stuff in that porch. And that's all I intended to do. I really, at that time, hadn't any plans to go beyond what I was building, except for maybe another array. We then dug a hole in order to put the pole in the ground, and frankly, that ground is so rocky, it was a heck of a challenge getting a hole deep enough and wide enough to concrete that post in. But we got it done and we got everything mounted, got the solar panels mounted, got all that done, dug a fairly shallow trench back to the cabin, but we put some PVC in it to protect the wires and ran everything up to the cabin. Up to that point, we're doing pretty good. Then we decided to put in our grounds. And I say grounds because I decided I probably would put in two. So the first one we tried to put in, <laughs> I mentioned rocky ground, right? We couldn't get it driven in straight down. And I had done research though, and I knew that you could get away with one at about a 15 degree angle or something like that. As long as you could drive it in on an angle and get all eight feet all the way under the ground, that would be acceptable. And so that's what we did. And we did manage to get it driven in on an angle all the way so that it was buried. That was perfect. But I decided at that point that I should probably put in a second one. So we tried another spot across from that porch on the other side of the porch and tried to drive that one straight in, and we could not get it. We got it about four feet down, and we could not pound it any farther. We tried and tried, we hit rocks, and could not move it. And I ended up having to cut that piece off, and then what we did is we buried it, and we tied both the two-foot section or four-foot section or whatever it was underground. We buried that about a foot, foot and a half down. We tied that to the four-foot section that went all the way into the ground, 
and then brought those over and tied it to the other ground that we put on an angle. So I do think I have enough grounds, but man, I'm telling you, that was a real challenge. In any case, so now we've got the solar panels mounted on the ground mount. We got the wires run to the cabin. We've got our grounds in, all that's done. We mounted a combiner box on the side of the cabin and put breakers in for that. And I think we ran 15 amp breakers, but I'd have to check. Might be 20s. Um, I, I looked them up to find out the right size breaker. So we put the breakers in, we then ran 10 gauge stranded wire from the combiner box into the porch and over to a DC connect box. Now, at the time, I had read that I should have a disconnect for the solar panels on my disconnect box. And I put in a breaker for my charge controller, which was a Zantrek C40. And I have my battery disconnect, which is the breaker for your inverter. And I then installed six golf cart batteries, which I installed in series parallel for a 12 volt system. Now that would mean that I took two of my six volt batteries in series and then connected three sets of series batteries together in parallel to get me 660 amp hours at 12 volts of batteries running to my DC panel. And then I put my 2500 watt inverter and connected it up to that DC panel as well. That gave me power. Next, I had to run a cable from the inverter, which was a plug-in style. It's not a wire up one. This is more like a truck style to the wall and then out the wall over to my main AC panel for the cabin. Not a big deal, but a bit hokey. The other thing I installed was an IOTA 55 amp battery charger for lead acid batteries. Now that, I had to run a cable through the wall again and put a plug on the outside of the wall that I could plug a generator into. And I had a portable generator that I could hook up right there on the outside of the, of the wall and charge the batteries up with that as well. So by doing all of that, I now had 660 amp hours of golf cart batteries at 12 volts with a 2500 watt modified sine wave inverter, the Zantrex C40 charge controller for my 615 watts of solar panels, all the breakers and disconnects that I needed and was able to run all of that to my AC panel and I also had a battery charger that I could run off of my generator. Very, very simple system and it actually worked pretty well. The only problem I had was that that Zantrax controller is not an MPPT controller, and I was running my solar panels in series. So I was sending about 54 volts to that charge controller, but it was a PWM charge controller, pulse width modulated, and the way those work is they're really designed that the voltage coming from the solar panels is the correct voltage to charge your batteries up. It's the only time you need to worry about whether you got 12 or 24 volt or whatever solar panels. So. Had I put those panels in parallel, it would have been perfectly fine. But because they were 50 feet away and I needed to keep my voltage drop below 3%, I put them in series to get my voltage up. Higher voltage, less voltage drop or loss over that 50 foot span on 10 gauge cable. So I had to replace that PWM charge controller with an MPPT charge controller that's also here now so that it could take that 54 volts and convert it to a 12 volt charging ramp. No big deal, but it was kind of a mistake when I built the system. Otherwise, that system worked really, really well and I was happy with it. The only changes that I made was I immediately got two more batteries because I realized that the six batteries really were not enough to run a refrigerator and do the things that we wanted to do when we were out there on weekends. I was needing to run my generator a little too much. So we got a couple more batteries. Then later, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I ended up with 12 batteries and pure sine wave and all kinds of other stuff. And that's another video. And I'll put it at the end of this video so you can check those out if you like. But in any case, folks, that's the initial solar build. It was actually a lot of fun and I learned a lot from it. And if there's anything that I can tell you about trying to do the same thing yourself is, don't be shy, go out and do it. And if you underbuild your system like I did, it's okay. People are gonna tell you, don't do that. I'm telling you, no, it's fine. If that's all you can afford at the time, put it in and learn and get to use it and figure out how it all works. Because once you start figuring things out, it's easy to start upgrading once you have it already installed. And frankly, I've upgraded that system multiple times in the last 15 years. It's now a LifePo 4 system with uh, 24 volts and a 4,000 watt inverter charger with a backup generator, all kinds of stuff. It's a totally different system today with monitors and everything. But 
if you start where you can afford to start and you start learning, that's actually a great way to do it, I think. So don't be shy. Go ahead, give it a try. Get some panels, get, get some components. I'd be happy to drop some down below for you to check out what I think would work fine in today's world. I'll even put down what I bought and used, though some of those components you can't buy anymore anyway. But I'll let you know down below in the description what I put in and what I would probably put in today if you're interested. Anyway, folks, that's it. That's all I got for you today. I hope it helps somebody out. I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. And up there, I'll put the one from, well, the beginnings of my solar and how I put it all together, too. So thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate you being here. The old jar hit out.